It's Friday. That's right. It is already Friday. And here we are hanging out for Friday with beef. Hey, I'm Chef Jason. And uh, thank you to my friends at the Colorado Beef Council for having us uh, host another one of our Fridays with beef. We're very excited tonight because we are getting you ready for the big game. That's right. We have such an amazing recipe today that is really going to help make you the king or the queen of the big game snack feast. That's right. What are we up to? patty melt. And I'll tell you, when uh, Tammy posted on the Colorado Beef Council Facebook page that we were doing patty melts, I've never seen more excitement. People are like, oh, I just had a patty melt the other night. I love patty melts. I got a lot of texts from friends too saying, oh, when's the last time you've had a good patty melt? Tonight, we're going to show you how to rock a patty melt. Adam, my trusted assistant, is working behind the camera tonight to... Uh, get everything situated. I'm going to get this fired up here real quick. Mr. Adam, do we need to say hello to anyone? <clears throat> we got Mary Ann. I think there was a Charlene. That I like it. Mary Ann, Charlene. Cool, cool. What else? Anybody else we need to say hi to? I'm just getting the flame going here. All Guys, right. we like comments and questions. So uh, Yeah, so be sure to ask your questions and comments. We definitely, definitely love your questions and comments. And then don't forget, tonight's recipe... Uh, I've posted a link in the description section. You can click that, grab it off beefitswhatsfordinner.com, or you can head over to the Colorado Beef Council uh, website, cobeef.com, Colorado Beef Council website. Uh, there's a link up there, a tab up there called Cooking. Find all of our videos, recipes, and more. Uh, we've got a lot of cool things for you. And on the CO, uh, Colorado Beef Council's YouTube channel, we just posted, remember the... Uh, Cucumber Chili? appetizers we did? Uh, yeah. Chili was good too, right? But we did cucumber appetizers uh, with a little bit of beef on there. It was just an amazing like Korean style cucumber app. I mean, we ate all of them when we made them. So uh, anybody else we need to say hi to or any? Shirley and Nancy just joined. I like it. Hello, Shirley. Hello, Nancy. Hey, and like we said, do not forget, please, leave your questions and comments in the chat section. Adam's moderating, so really, we can answer any question you want. And if we don't know the answer, that's right, we're making it up as we go along. So, happy Friday. We're excited to have you. Uh, like I said, I'm Chef Jason, representing my friends, Colorado Beef Council. So, let's get rolling here. You uh, want to grab the camera as gently as you can. I remember we tried this last time. It was pretty gentle, right? Getting gentler every day. Every, oh, wow. I like it. All right. Check it out, you guys. We are doing classic beef patty melts tonight. Uh, when's the last time you had a patty melt? I'm trying to think. Exactly. Yeah. I don't even remember. Waffle House? But do I, they make patty melts? I don't even know. They do. And I feel like <laughs> some kind of you probably had probably. that at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Maybe. Yeah. So patty melts are fantastic. Uh, they really, I think, hit everything, right? You get that beautiful richness of the beef. You get sweetness out of your sautéed onions. You get that melty deliciousness out of your cheese. Hey, tonight we've got a uh, farmer's rye, a Bavarian farmer's rye, and a marble rye. We were looking for pumpernickel, but struck out on that. So... No big deal, but we will uh, keep going. Adam, you will let me know whenever we have a question. I'm just going to keep rambling, right? So, all right, come on in. Let's talk ingredients today because I'll tell you, not a lot of ingredients needed to make something this fantastic. So uh, we're starting off with 80-20 ground beef, and this is ground chuck. Uh, we love our ground chuck. That works out great for us. We have a little bit of Worcestershire <laughs> or Worcestershire, however that's pronounced. We have a little bit of Worcestershire. Check it out, a little bit of salt and pepper, or you can always use uh, one of your favorite rubs if you have a favorite rub you like to use. Now, tonight, tonight, Adam, and there we go. Hey, tonight, one of the questions I get asked very, very frequently is, how do I keep my burger from puffing? Uh, and one of the things we're gonna talk about tonight is how to take this ground beef that is a, a little bit separated right now uh, because of the thickness of the grinds, but we're gonna emulsify it back together. We're gonna mix that up, kind of knead it together, and then we're gonna use a burger press. I really feel the best way to keep your burgers from puffing up, step number one is to mix it all up and get that get this that's separated back to being together. And then we will uh, hand mix it, get it all set, season it, and then we're going in a burger press where we can press it nice and flat, all right? So, step number one, 
we are going with one pound of ground beef. Recipe says you can use 93% uh, lean or leaner if you want. I went with 80-20 because we're going to lose about 10% of that fat anyways. So Charlene, yeah, Charlene just asked if you could do a 90-10. Yeah, you could totally do a 90-10. You could do 93-7. I always feel like when you cook ground beef, um, you lose about half the percentage of fat. So if you're cooking an 80-20, you're really going to end up with about a 90-10 because you lose about 10% or uh, half of that fat, right? Uh, 10% as well. So uh, when you're doing a 93-7, you're going to end up pretty lean. So just be careful. If you do a 90-10, you'll end up, I think, probably in a really good spot. So we're going to add a tablespoon of Worcestershire. And then we're going to add a little bit of one of our favorite rubs. Can you say that again? Worcestershire. Worcestershire. You know, it's one of those things like... I'm from Minnesota. We say things differently. This week we realized I say root, root beer <laughs> and you say root beer. So one of those things. So go ahead and just mix that up here. Now, the important thing, this ground beef is a pretty thick grind. So we want to actually work this back together. That is going to help what we call emulsify, right? It's going to help mix the fat and the beef back together again. And this is step number one in helping us make sure that our burger doesn't puff up. Uh, I actually had two of my friends email me this week that same question or text me with the same question. How do I get my burgers to stop puffing up? Well, definitely if you're using fresh ground beef, you can re-emulsify this and get that set. All right. So once we get this mixed. Just going to do a comparison here. You can right? definitely see it. Yeah, you can definitely see it, right? You can see this as you know, it gets a little bit f smoother, so to speak, and it takes that large grind out of the mix and puts it back where we need it. So we'll go ahead and leave that. We're gonna let that sit for just a minute. We are heating up cast iron. We're cooking here tonight in our studio on cast iron. So we'll go ahead and let that heat up. Uh, we're gonna get a beautiful sear out of that cast iron. And then also what we're gonna do tonight as well is um, we're gonna use the, uh, onions right to help season that cast iron so that we saute these off first get that sweetness out of the onions we're going to leave it in the cast iron so that when we add the beef we get the beef flavor in there as well and then when we add the bread we pick up all of that flavor so it can be a one pot meal or a one skillet meal if you choose so you got to give a shout out to linda miller from sarasota i love it hello linda miller from sarasota She's anybody actually, else uh, anybody have any questions or anything we want to chat about or are we good linda's actually my mother too well you got your mom to watch yeah. how did that happen did you have to pay her i can't get anyone <laughs> in my family to watch ever unless i pay him so hello mrs adam's mom nice to see you Thanks for hanging Liz out. Liz just joined us. Liz, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let me get this guy out of the way here. No crying. No crying. You know, I feel good about these onions, right? I'm, uh, usually I can tell when I trim the ends if they're going to be crybaby onions or if I'm safe. So is, there, is there a trick to not crying? There, you know what? There isn't a trick yeah. because no matter what, you can't put a piece of bread on your head. You still cry. You can't wear a hat. Goggles don't work. Uh, just seems to be the strength of that onion. So what we're going to do on here is we're actually going to dice these onions a little bit smaller, right? That's going to help us with cook time. So they'll cook a little bit faster for us. Uh, but then I'll tell you what, when they're diced, they seem to just melt into the patty melt, which that's a whole part of the patty melt. And then I can't forget the cheese tonight on our patty melt. We're going classic, classic diner cheese, right? We're doing a little American, 2% milk American cheese. Then we have a little bit of baby Swiss too. I always feel like baby Swiss, a little bit stronger, has a little bit better flavor. So we're going to go ahead. We're going over here. We're going to start off. Uh, I'm just kind of moderating temperature on here a little bit, making sure we don't get too crazy, right? We'll add a little bit of butter. Once that butter melts, put your onions right on there. That'll help keep it from flaring up or any of those little issues. But we'll go ahead and add that. Now, I like to add a little bit of salt and pepper to my onions uh, just to add some uh, more flavor, if you will. So we'll add a little bit of salt and pepper on there. I can't believe there was a time in my life where I did not eat onions. Was there really? I hate to admit it, but there was. And now you are an onion fanatic. We eat some pretty good stuff in this place, right? It smells so good right now. All right. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Get those all set. We'll wipe down our board here real quick, but we're gonna keep uh, we're gonna keep that cast iron nice and hot, right? Make sure we keep everything going, and then grab a spoon. 
Welcome, Lacey. Good to have you here. Let us know, too, real quick, while we're uh, kind of doing some cooking here, let us know where you're watching from. I know we've got a Sarasota, Florida. I'm assuming we have a lot of Colorado, but give us a shout. Give a shout out to where you're watching from real quick, just so we have a interesting little demographic or low geographic location of everyone, right? All right. So we have this on high. We are cooking high on the cast iron. Uh, you can cook uh, on your uh, saute pans however you want. Let's go hot, stay hot, keep those guys uh, rocking and rolling. Because we want these onions to caramelize. We've got the butter on there. We'll get that moisture out of the butter. We'll let those onions caramelize a little bit, get all that sweetness. Then we're going to scoop them out and hold them. Wait for uh, burger time. We got a couple, three Colorados and Missouri. And somebody says it looks delicious. Rock on. Dude, yeah, we, we still need to get smell o vision somehow. We, tell me about it. Or I'm telling you, you know what we should do one of these times? We should have studio audience. We have the table. I yeah. mean, we have the table over there. We could have a studio audience. Maybe we will talk to our friends at the Beef Council and see how we can get studio audience. I'll tell you what, next month, uh, February is heart month. So we actually have Katie, who is the RD for Colorado uh, Beef Council. She's going to come and hang out with us. We're going to do a little tag team, uh, talk about heart healthy. We're going to show you a great recipe. There's over 33 lean cuts of beef that are certified to be heart healthy. So we're gonna have a blast. So be sure to tune in and watch us for that. Uh, and maybe maybe we'll get a little... We got Pam and Charlene yeah. have volunteered to... To be, okay, I got it, I got studio it. Studio audience. I love posters. it. I feel like that would be a blast, right? And then don't forget too, if you're looking to buy local beef and you're uh, wondering where you can get that, you can head over to cobeef.com Colorado Beef Council website, and there is a map or a locator map that will get you connected with how and where you can buy local beef, which is super cool. I, uh, I love getting beef local. Some of our uh, beef we've had uh, has been just absolutely fantastic. And I don't say that like I'm surprised. I just say it like I'm super proud, which is great. I can't um, wait for... Farmer's market season to start again. I know, There's right? always some uh, fresh local beef. There. All right. So we, Adam and I were talking earlier, and the way our burger uh, patty machine works is we have a, a four-ounce patty or an eight-ounce. So we're going to do four-ounce patties. A, they're going to cook a little bit faster, right? We're excited about them cooking a little faster. And then we'll just go through here and get this divided into four, make sure they look relatively, you know, close to the same size, I guess, right? All right. So... Again, I'm kneading this now, getting it all back together here. I have one piece of parchment paper on the bottom. I'm going to go with one piece of parchment on the top. I'm going to go with one piece of parchment on the top. Then I'm going to take that guy, and we are giving it the ever mighty squish. And give it a good, good. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is how you prevent burgers from puffing up. Look at that right there. How is that for a beautiful, beautiful burger? Same thing again here. You can see I'm mixing it up. I'm emulsifying the fat and the beef, getting everything kind of back in its place. I'll flatten it just a skosh. That means a little bit, I think. Oh, grandma talk. And then same thing again here. Push down nice and hard. Sorry, I'm covering that. Push down and get that beef. So your grandma said skosh? I skosh. It's one of your favorite yeah. words, I feel like. I like, well, I say it a lot, don't I? Do. I? Yeah, sorry. Sounds All right, like that. same thing here. Go ahead, re-emulsify that. Get it all back together. And same thing again. Tell you, burger press is key uh, when it comes to making burgers in the summer. And when it comes to making uh, patties now, that burger press is just does a great job. Look how even and uniform those are, which means they're going to cook the same. Uh, we're going to cook fast. The beauty of cooking these guys, too, on cast iron. A little bit of crust on there, too, right? Should be awesome. I same like thing your, here. Re-emulsify. Definitely like your wax paper trick. Who does? I do. Oh, yeah, it's solid, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that way, I mean, the burger... Anything, anything for less mess. Well, the burger press good. still gets dirty, but the beauty is I'm not scooping out burger patties. Like, I always feel if I don't have uh, parchment in here, we're in there trying to pry out this beautiful burger patty, and then you might as well just, yeah, have ground beef again. So let me set this guy off to the side. Let's take a look at our onions. Look at that. that Smell of vision. Smell a vision, right? And I, you can cook these as much as you want uh, or as little as you want. I like to caramelize them a little bit 
further, a little bit longer. Get more of that moisture out. Concentrate some of the sweetness. We're using sweet uh, white onion. I just like to build up some of that flavor. Could you yeah. use a red or Spanish? Yeah, you could yellow. totally use a red onion if you want. That would work out just fine. Uh, they, they tend to be a little sharper, right? But if you, if you cook them and, and caramelize them a little bit, you're going to be just fine. All right. So we'll let that go for just a minute. We're going to let these go here for just a minute. And uh, any questions super quick or no? Hey, don't forget, uh, tonight's recipe is in the description section. So you can head down there, click on that recipe, print it out. This is great for the big game that's coming up. This is fantastic for like a Sunday afternoon. In fact, my wife said uh, last night, she asked what we were cooking tonight. I said, hey, we're doing um, patty melts. And she's like, oh, <laughs> Can you fire up the griddle on Sunday and make patty melts for dinner? So I, at the Moore's house on Sunday, not Saturday, Sunday, we'll be enjoying patty melts, which, I mean, I'm not, I'm not mad at that at all, at all. Patty all right. melts are very underrated, I feel. Patty as melts much are... as you have a hamburger in your lifetime, yeah. You, patty, patty melt is like that special treat hamburger. We, Adam and I went to a diner on Route 66, and I was contemplating between pot roast and the patty melt. Like it was, that, it was just a hard decision to make. I went with the pot roast because pot roast, <laughs> right? All right, so let's go ahead. Let's call it a day on this, right? I think those onions will be good. Are you happy with those? We're good. All right, so I'm going to take these guys out. We're going to set them here in a bowl. Everybody's just watching along tonight. No, no questions. Yeah. I can't believe anybody, they don't have any questions, <clears throat> right? Janela said it looks delicious. Who did? Janela. Janela. Thank you. Thank you. Tell you, if you could smell these onions in here, whoo, man, it smells so good. Kate just joined us. Welcome, Kate. Kate. Kate's last name? Kate Schultz. Kate. Kate and I are doing the live next month. So you guys, our RD is on here. And I'll tell you what, we are going to be having a blast. It is heart month next month, February, which is in like two days. Uh, it is heart month in February. And Kate and I are going to be doing a little heart healthy tag team. So Kate's going to be my guest in the studio, which is absolutely amazing because we love guests in the studio. So, all right, check it out, dude. Here's what we're doing. So we have those beautiful patties. We're going right back on here. Under that cast iron. The sound of cooking. Isn't that beautiful? Too. They every, talk. Every you talk, sensory. Yeah, and they talk about, you know, people ask, how do you know it's done? How do you tell this? A lot of it is a visual cue. And a lot of it's hearing. You're listening for a sound. You're listening for that sauteing. You're listening uh, for a lot of that. So we'll go ahead and just cover that with a little lid. We're going to turn that on because that's going to be our... Uh, Do you have to cover that? No, or? you know what? I like to. You don't have to. I like to cover it because it helps just even out that cooking process a little bit. So it'll help those burgers kind of cook a little more even which I like. Okay, what are you thinking? Should we do marble rye? I like marble. Marble rye? I'm team marble. We found this like literally at the last minute, which was awesome. Uh, let me grab paper towel here real quick. I want to uh, wipe down our board. All right, guys, any questions? If you have them, now is the time to ask them. Uh, I'll keep you on the burgers here real quick. I'm gonna grab a towel. <clears throat> right. Roger any just said they have some Cabin going on in Northeast Colorado. I love it. Roger who? Uh, Coberstein. Oh, very cool. Hi, Roger. Good to see you. We're Good to hear from you. We were just earlier today, too. We did. Actually, I, uh, one of my rancher friends volunteered, or not volunteered, one of my rancher friends posted on their Facebook page that they were seeking volunteers to help with their calving that's coming up. So I'm picking a time slot in February, and I'm going to go out and spend the night with them and be on calf watch overnight and i have to be honest i'm pretty uh i'm pretty excited you could tell i was a little excited about that today <laughs> he's like what are you going to do i said oh, we'll probably hang out in the truck and keep warm and then when we need to do our job we'll get out there and get it done but i'm very excited i uh kind of like a bucket list item right i i feel like i have some good agricultural bucket list items and calving is right up there among them so I'm going to, I'm very excited. I'm going to head out there, spend some time with them, do some calving and I think we're good. Hey, uh, chef's tip of tips for you too. While you're cooking these burgers, if you want just a little pinch of salt on there, never hurt. Now you can see these guys shrunk, right? But they didn't puff up back up again. Like if you were to hand form them and they puff up like a big, uh, uh, ball, like a 
softball. I need to talk about that salt used. That is a that is a really good sea salt uh, that we like. Hey, check this out. So uh, we're gonna take our marble, marble rye, spread a little bit of butter on there. Nothing too crazy, crazy, right? But get a little butter on there. I think when it comes to patty melt making, there's a lot of foundational things that make this an exceptional patty melt. Starting with the beef. Gotta have good ground beef, right? Gotta have a little bit more fat. Like I said, I love that 80-20. Uh, also, you need some crust, right? Crunchy, crispy, crusty bread is everything. A burger with a little bit of crust on it is also absolutely amazing. We're going to season it right. We've got onions. We're going to hit it with cheese. It's like the quad <laughs> effect of amazing, right? All right, let's flip these guys. And, I mean, seriously, see this here? So give these guys a chance to cook just a little bit like that. I think that's pretty exceptional. We'll go Did ahead. You and what, what heat level do you have the... Yeah, uh, I have the cast iron on high. On high. So, yeah, I, I like to cook it on high because what I'm looking for is recovery time. So I want to be very sensitive to uh, when you have your cast iron at this temperature and all of a sudden you put those four burgers on there, it's going to drop in temperature. If I have it turned down low, it's dropping to a point where it takes so much energy to get it back to sizzling that if I keep it on high, it, it sizzles, it sears, it's evaporating some of that moisture, but it's staying hot and continually driving back up. So I may have only lost, you know, 20 degrees surface temperature. Uh, and dare I ask, would you ever smush it? No, I don't like to. I mean, you can. It's not, it's, it's, yes, you're going to lose a little bit of moisture, right? But I think the ultimate goal when you're doing this is to make sure you have an evenly cooked burger. So if you give it a little press, not going to kill it. I'm not going to push the ever living daylights out of it, but see all that juice that you're pushing out. The beauty of cooking on cast iron is that juice concentrates itself and comes right back into your burger. So we kind of have a self basting thing going on here. So, all right. Yeah. Cause I guess a grill, it would go right down to the bottom, right? Yeah. The, on a grill, it'll drip, right? It'll hit those flavorizer bars that are on the bottom of your grill. Kind of that moisture explodes, that flavor explodes and comes right back up. So we're just going to do a different method of that, so to speak, right? Pam gave you a shout out on the toasted buttered, the buttered toasted Who did? bread. Pam. Thanks, Pam. All right, now, because we're going to be cooking bread on here, I am going to uh, moderate the heat on this because I definitely don't want this to hit and then burn right away. So we'll keep an eye on that. Let me grab our cheese out of here real quick. I, it, before you and I were doing this together, right? I, my wife and I would do this and then enjoy all the dinner and we would do it at our house. So that was always fun. But now I feel like we have pretty good times here because we were making dinner 6.30 on a Friday night. And when we're done, we get to clean up and eat patty melts. Doesn't get much better than that, right? Roger, Roger uh, raises some beautiful Angus. Um, and I will tell you, yeah, I'm going to be pretty excited about calving. Got to be honest. It's going to be fun. So you're, you're going to do an American and a Swiss? Concert? American and Swiss, yep. That is such a good, you know, you get that beautiful, melty, gooey, cheesy out of the American. Then you get that sharp, like, woohoo, out of that Swiss. Uh, yes. And we also have a sharp what? Woohoo! Uh, <laughs> out of the Swiss. And we went with baby Swiss. I love baby Swiss because I think it's a little, uh, a little better. It's almost a little stronger, right? Unless you're getting a cave aged or something of the sort. But all right, let's check this out here. See what we got. It's okay if you flip these guys a little bit. Don't worry about that. They shrink up just a little bit, huh? Oh, absolutely. Did you catch me sampling there? No. Are we good? All right. So put a little American on there. Like that. Let's go ahead and get our bread on here. Charlene was asking if it's going to be a combination of the cheese, and it is. Yep, I'm going to do a little bit of each. So I'm kind of breaking this in half so I get it to just melt how I want. I don't like a ton to get over on the... What should we call it? All right, let's get over here, guys. Ooh -ha -ha. Ooh -ha -ha. Multitasking. I know, right? Everything. And we'll do the same on that. 
You get a good color contrast too on those two, mm -hmm. two types. And then we're going to cheat, not cheat, but we're going to use that lid again. The beauty of that lid is that's going to help us um, create a little steam in here uh, and help that steam kind of melt this cheese just a little bit, which is going to be so amazing. All right, let's double check our bread, make sure we're not scorching. And you could do this on a regular nonstick kitchen yep. skillet. Yep. You can do it in your skillet. You could do it on the grill. You could do it on your griddle, kind of whatever you want. So let's go ahead, do that. Oh yeah. Keep flipping this stuff back and forth. Let's see the Turn butter. Turn guys down a little bit. Yeah, I'm just kind of toasting, trying to get a little toast on each side just to keep everything doing its thing. All right. That actually worked out perfect because I think we just, yep, awesome. So that tank just did its thing, right? So that tank is gone. And we'll just keep an eye on this. That bread nice and toasted. Everything we need in here. Any questions? Anybody have any comments? Look at that. Marble rye smells incredible in here. I will tell you that, right? Try not to dirty all the dishes so we have more time to eat tonight. Less time cleaning up. Can you do this? Is my question I have. Is there any other traditional topping or dressing you would do? On I mount? like this. You know, I've heard uh, I've heard some people do Russian dressing or Thousand Island if they if they choose. I'm I'm good with this. I'm so happy with this uh, creation and this concoction. I like it as it is. They say you're a purist, right? When you like it that way. All right, check those guys out. What do you think of those? Solid. We're in a good place. All right. And again, if you're just joining us, it is Friday night this with like, beef, right? Like, this is like 3D art. Yeah, 3D art. It is Friday night with beef, you guys. We are hanging out here. I'm Chef Jason for my friends at the Colorado Beef Council. And we are uh, getting ready for lots of fun, delicious, tasty, tasty creations. It is patty mount night here. And uh, look at this. Look at, look at, look at, look at. So now you could do these, guess what? You could do these as sliders if you wanted to do them as sliders, but I'm doubling up on this bread. You're going to see what I'm doing here in just a minute. This is next level. I think this is totally next level, right? So we're going to go back on here, get a little more cook. But did you see what I did? I basically put two burgers on the bread. So I'm going to be able to cut this in half and have like two smaller burgers, if you will or two smaller portions. But I tell you, you could do, like I said, do these on sliders. This is a great way for a double cheeseburger. You can, you can actually eat it, <laughs> right? Right. It's not too thick. All right, there we go, just like that. What do you think? Are you happy? Is this gonna be a good dinner? Mm -hmm. I feel so. Now, here's a question. Are you, are you ketchup and mustard on here, or are you just straight up as it is? I feel that traditional is good, but I'm not against breaking the rules of being okay. traditional. All right, so. I'm with you. I'm I'm a ketchup. I'll take I'll take ketchup on here. I will I will absolutely admit that. All right, so let's pull this guy out. To be honest, I think the Russian dressing would be really good. Yeah, or a Thousand Island too. Mm -hmm. a thousand Island would be amazing. So let me grab a knife. Let me get through here. Now check it out. Look at how look at what I did. I just wanted to show you again. I have both patties on there. So basically I can cut this in half and now I've got two little mini patty mounts. And then if I cut that in half, oh my word, <laughs> look at that. My mouth is watering. Isn't that great? So it is patty mount night here in our studio, in our kitchen. And we're hanging out with our friends at Colorado Beef Council. So uh, I'm Chef Jason. Like I was saying earlier, if you want tonight's recipe, head down into the description section of this uh, Facebook Live. We've got the link for you. You can click that. Head over to beefiswhatsfordinner.com. Grab this recipe and then have an absolute blast with it. Uh, I think this is great for family night. It is great for uh, tailgating, big game. It is good to feed a crowd. It is definitely going to please everyone. And then, like we said, if you go to cobeef.com, Colorado Beef Council's website, up top, there's a tab called cooking. Click on that tab. That'll bring you into all the recipes, all the videos, everything we've done. And then also be sure while you're at cobeef.com, Colorado's uh, Beef Council's website, 
you find the beef locator. That's going to help you figure out where you can get some local. Look at that melty, gooey, cheesy. Some local yeah. Colorado beef for your fridge, your freezer, and your belly. Charlene and Roger both said straight up. And the more I look at this, the more I tend to agree with them. Because Straight up, no ketchup, no way, mustard. That way you get the beef. I don't, I mean. More beef flavor. I'm not mad at either one. I'm going to do both, right? I'm going to try it both ways here. I know for a fact, but. Hey, thank you everyone for hanging out with us tonight. We really appreciate it. As always, a big thank you to uh, all of our farmers and ranchers who work tirelessly day in and day out to keep us fed with the most amazing beef on the planet. We know you guys never take a day off. Don't get to enjoy a lot of vacations and holidays because you're working tirelessly for us. We appreciate that. So thank you very much. And then as always, Thank you so much to my friends at the Colorado Beef Council for letting us hang out, do these uh, Friday night lives. We look forward to seeing you in February. Uh, it's probably going to be towards the end of February. Kate and I are going to hang out, and it is heart month, so we're going to be doing uh, some fun things, talking about heart-healthy heart dishes, and then get you all set up with some amazing things. 33 lean cuts of beef. That is quite amazing. Uh, so don't believe what you hear when people say, don't eat this, don't eat that. Do your research, uh, do your due diligence, and I'll tell you what, we're here to help give you some fun recipes that still allow you to enjoy the amazing, wonderful Colorado beef. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Have an exceptional weekend, and we will see you soon. See you guys.